Hello everyone, we are Dion and Kim Delport from Joshua Generation Church. We serve on the eldership team at Sungdale PM Congregation. We have two beautiful granddaughters. For the past five to six years, we've served and overseen the children's work in the church. We felt it important to share with you this morning how we can lead our children emotionally through this COVID time. So parents, it has come to our attention that a number of parents have been experiencing behavioural problems with their children. And so I felt it important to remind you that inasmuch as parents have experienced a kaleidoscope of emotions through this time, whether they be feelings of anxiety, joy, compassion, anger, children are experiencing exactly the same emotions. The challenge that children have is they do not always have the vocabulary to frame their emotions. And so they may have anger meltdowns or anger temper tantrums or be weepy or clingy. Parents may then discipline accordingly. But I think we face the danger of over-disciplining without establishing what the root issue of the child's meltdown is. Or sometimes we may completely overlook what is happening. I think it is fair to say that children, like adults, have experienced great loss in this time. And loss is a universal sense of change. Children have lost contact with their friends, physical contact. They've lost a sense of their daily routine. They've lost their, their interaction with school and their friends at school. They've lost interaction with grandparents and family and church family. As a result of this loss, they may be also experiencing grief. And grief would manifest with the following emotions. They may be in denial. They may be angry. They may start bargaining with you or even with God. They may be depressed and sad. And they may reach a stage of acceptance. These stages are fluid and your children may skip one or two of them. But I think it's fair to say that we need to be very focused on exactly where our kids are at the moment. They're fearful and anxious. Some of the examples that we have heard over the last time have been children being very anxious or their parents even going to buy groceries and a deep concern that their parents may be arrested or that they may be arrested if they go out without a mask on. Some of them have even interpreted the lack of friends visiting as that their friends do not love them anymore. Others are very weepy after WhatsApp video calls with grandparents and friends. And so I felt that maybe we could focus on perhaps three handles for you as parents to use, utilize in this time. First of all, I want to say be emotionally aware of where you are at. You may have grown up in a home where speaking about emotions was considered a form of weakness or shame. And so you avoid talking about emotions. Or you may have grown up in a home where your parents were intent on talking about emotions and so you are able to champion your child's emotions through this time. So the one thing I would want to say is please validate your children's emotions. Be aware of where they're at. Don't say things like stop crying or you being silly, but rather say you seem to be very angry. Could you please tell me what you're angry about? Or you look very anxious. Why are you anxious or what has made you anxious? Very important to be in touch with your emotions and their emotions. And if you feel like you are not coping emotionally, I would strongly suggest that you consult with one of your spiritual oversight or even with somebody who is a psychologist. Just so that you establish yourself well emotionally in this time. The other thing I would advise is that you talk to your children. Please switch off the TV. There is a, a lot of negative content that is coming across the television screens. Switch off your TV and talk to your children. Talk to them about facts, but then talk to them about the truth of God's word, who God is and who we are in him. You may even talk about biblical characters who have faced challenges and overcome, or about people like Corrie Tim Worm who have faced challenges and have overcome. So this time too, secondly, I would want us to build emotional and spiritual resilience in our children. Establish routines, give them projects to complete in a day. 
The other thing that I would suggest is that you build family memories. This would include dancing, singing, maybe even making vegetable gardens, maybe attempting new skills and learning new skills together as a family. But I'm really trusting that when we come out of this time, our children will be established further in their identity in Christ and that they would be more emotionally whole. And I would just like to remind you as well of the precious, powerful Holy Spirit that's resident in every single one of us. And I want to encourage you to pray for wisdom as you lead your children into maturity. We trust this has been helpful to you and bless you all.